least teacher has taken part in educational cruises since they first started. As a means of broadening the outlook of his pupils, he's found these cruises hard to beat. As always, thorough preparation is the key. This cruise is to Norway. In this school, practice is considered as important as theory. A dry land craft was made to give do-it-yourself navigation training for educational cruises and Duke of Edinburgh awards. The classroom notice board becomes a focal point. For instance, weather study comes to life by the use of maps from newspapers. Tracing depressions and anticyclones gives them a real meaning. Dancing lessons ensure that everyone will be able to get into the swing of things aboard. Sessions with the local girls' school have no attendance problems. Educational cruises introduced deck hockey to this school. Now it's an established sport during the winter when playing fields are out of use. The journey to the ship is worth a little thought. Pointing out the geological features of the countryside prevents the boredom that causes bad behavior. Once aboard, the first and most important job will be muster stations. At the end of the first day, a stroll on deck feels good. Turning in, in a comfortable cabin, feels even better. Morning tea, of course. It's all part of the service and sets you up before the school day begins. Samples of salt water taken at regular intervals form a new kind of detective story. The disparity of temperature between sea and air, in this case, accounted for the fog on that day. Salinity, by specific gravity, can be directly related to the ship's draft. The associated graph reveals the secrets of currents and upwellings. Next on the program, a visit to the bridge. From the radar scanner, ranges and bearings of the coastline are requested and noted. This is a good example of electronics in action. The ship's exact position can now be plotted by the pupils on charts which have been brought along for this purpose. On overcast days, 101 feet marked out on the deck allows the speed to be calculated from passing driftwood. The cruise is nearly over now. The last patrol duty is undertaken with the knowledge that for all concerned, every effort has been well worthwhile. Four a.m. the fourth bridge. At Grangemouth, the ship passes into the dock. Slowly, the gates close to the open sea. Another educational cruise is over, but the knowledge gained will have a lasting value. We have shown how one party leader made the most of the opportunities offered by an educational cruise. There are many different ways, and every teacher can choose his own methods. It's up to you. Whether you cruise to the midnight sun, the islands of the Atlantic, or the historic lands of the Mediterranean, we at BI hope that you, as party leader, will do all you can to ensure that your students get the maximum benefit from what will be the voyage of a lifetime.